So I want to zoom in closely on Mayor Wheeler's victory last night over Sarah Ayanna Rome. Now with his win, Wheeler pulled off something that a Portland mayor hasn't done in 20 years, and that is actually win re-election in this city. It hasn't happened since 2000 when Mayor Vera Katz won her third term. But we've had three mayors since Katz, Tom Potter, Sam Adams, and most recently Charlie Hales. All three of them have not served a second term, though not because they lost, they didn't run. All three of them chose not to run again for various reasons. Ted Wheeler did run, and he won. But if you look at the numbers you see on the screen right there and do a little bit of math, you'll see that a majority of people actually voted against him. And that's because of that large number of write-in ballots, nearly 13%, which makes up more than 45,000 people total. Now, the thing is, we don't know, we might never know truly, which names were actually written on those write-in ballots. See, when the election staff is counting all of the votes, they tally the ballots in the write-in category as a single group. And if it actually looks like a write-in might have a chance of winning by comparing the candidates' actual percentages, then they'll go back and actually sort them out and look at all of the names. But this race, 13%, that wasn't gonna get it done. So they didn't even, you know, they didn't even parcel them out to see whose names are written on there. We do know, though, that there was a writing campaign for activist Teresa Rayford, which did have support from other activists. She was polling at one point with a decently substantial number of 6% late last month. A man named Joseph Whitcomb was also running a write-in campaign, branding himself as a conservative option to Wheeler and Diana Roan. Again, we don't know how many people actually wrote either of those names down on their ballots, or any other name for that matter. The only thing that we really can decipher from this is taking a look at where people decided to cast these write-in votes. Now, the Oregon Secretary of State's website breaks down the results by individual precincts in Portland. North and Southeast Portland, which favored Ayanna Roan, had a lot more write-in votes than West Portland, which favored Wheeler. And you might be saying, there's the proof. There we have it. Uh, the write-ins were siphoning from Ayanna Roan. But then you take a look at Far East Portland, parts of that, that community there, they favored Wheeler, and they also had a high percentage of write-in votes. So the bottom line, there's a lot unclear really when it comes to write-ins and the contribution they played to all this. But it does tell us one thing, a sizable share of people in Portland weren't happy with either candidate on the ballot. But our Pat Doris actually had a chance to sit down and talk to Teresa Rayford and asked her directly this morning if she thought the write-in campaign that surrounded her affected this election. When I saw those numbers this morning, like I said, it was astounding. Uh, when I look at the difference between Wheeler and I on her own, I on her own, it's uh, like 19,000 votes. I think you probably got the majority of the write-in votes, which was more than 45,000. Do you worry that maybe you cost her the election? I think that people that voted for Ted actually helped Ted win the election. Um, I don't think that anyone that voted for me uh, would have actually voted for Sarah I on her own. I think we have different values. Okay, well, let's bring in Pat Doris for just a moment. And Pat, we heard what Teresa Rayford had to say about how she thinks she might have impacted or la or didn't impact this race. But I was curious what your thoughts were on that as somebody who has covered politics and, and races like this for a very long time in this area. How substantial was well, her involvement to the outcome that we saw last night? It's hard to ignore the numbers, Dan. 45,000 people that wrote in for some candidate uh, it reminds me of 20, maybe 25 years ago when the conservative Republicans in the race for governor would battle each other within the party and there'd be a nominee, but then there'd be a write-in candidate that would siphon away just enough that would allow the Democrat to win. Uh, she believes that this is a new block of voters that would have not voted for Ayanna Roan. It was Teresa Rayford or nobody, but it's hard for me to believe that there weren't a decent number of those that maybe would have gone for Ayanna Roan if they didn't have the choice of going for Tressa Rayford. All right. Pat Doris, thanks.